Hello and welcome to the joint service of Peace Lutheran Church and St. John's Lutheran Church. We welcome you to our service. Today is the third Sunday of Easter and we're thankful to God that you're here to worship with us today. Your presence is truly a gift from God and we hope and pray that he will bless our worship time together. I am Pastor Mike Grobelch and I will be leading the service today. I'm one of the pastors at Peace Lutheran Church in Pico Rivera and the pastor at St. John Lutheran Church in North Long Beach. If you would like to receive copies of the bulletin and sermon prior to our service, please email us at the following email address, P-E-A-C-E-L-U-T-H-C-H -E at gmail.com or send us a DM at either of our two Facebook pages, Peace Lutheran Church of Pico Rivera, St. John's Lutheran Church of North Long Beach. And I ask that you join in the responsive readings during the course of the service. service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem, with palms in their hands, gathered to greet your dearly beloved son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our king, and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the peace of victory for our God. reading for this Sunday comes from the book of Acts chapter 3 beginning in the 11th verse. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this or why do you stare at us as though by your own power or piety we have made him to walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one, and asked for a murderer be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. <clears throat> and his name, by faith in his name, we made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given this man his perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed to, for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson comes from the book of First John chapter 3, beginning in the first verse. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. <clears throat> the reason why the world does not know us is that we did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, 
and that while we had not yet or has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has ever seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them, and he said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you doubt? Doubts arise in your heart. See my hands and my feet? That it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still disbelieved for joy was, uh, and joy was marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are the witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the resurrection gospel of the Lord. These things did Thomas count as real, the warmth of love, the chill of the grain of wood, the heft of stone, the last frail twitch of flesh and bone, the vision of his skeptic mind was keen enough to To any unexpected act, too large for his small world of fact, his reason certainties deny that one could live when one had died until. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Lord. Words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. As many of you know, one of my favorite authors is C.S. Lewis. And C.S. Lewis always seemed to manage to come up with some of the best titles for his book. The one that really stuck with me was called Surprised by Joy, written as an autobiography of how an atheistic Oxford Don came to faith in the risen Jesus Christ. It was also published around the time that a confirmed bachelor married late and unexpectedly to one Joy Gresham, surprised by joy. Joy can be a short commodity in this world. Oh, our adversary, the power and dominions of this world will parcel out happiness. We can become like those rats in a maze scampering around until we find that little red happiness button. We hit it and a pellet of happiness comes out. We hit it a few more times, but happiness doesn't always come out or comes out in decreasing amounts. And almost anything can be the happiness pellet. For some people, it can be the mortal three of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. For others, it can be achievement or money. Keep hitting that little red button for 80 hours a week with the proper amount of face time and eventually a pellet of a, of a promotion or a raise or a great assignment comes out of the chute, doesn't it? One of the top selling books in the past uh, 20 years or so is Who Moved My Cheese? Even uh, very good things can supply rat maze happiness pellets. Wit witness the Octomom or five times a day called a prayer from the mosque. While providing happiness, what all these things lack is the overwhelming and complete fleeting sense of joy. Happiness wanes and can cause unrest as we restlessly pursue that next pellet. Joy, we are surprised by joy because joy offers completion, because joy offers rest. Recognizing joy and what it offers can be too much for finite creatures like we. Joy touches the infinite and implies so much more than our day to our daily lives. I think that is about what you disciples uh, see in the text reacting to. The risen Jesus has come in their midst, stood among them, and given him their, his peace. And they don't believe it. They think they have seen a ghost. This is a reflection of happier times. It has been quite a ride. This Galilean miracle worker had walked up to the boats and said, follow me to work a day fisherman. He walked up to a tax collector's booth and said, follow me. And surprising even themselves, they dropped their nets and left their counting tables and followed. The ride has its ups and downs. Witness Jesusing, bringing back that dead girl and calming the storms, being set out to spread the message all over Israel, mixed in with the foreboding confrontations with the Pharisees and his incomprehensible parables. But it has ended on a complete down note. Jesus had turned his face to Jerusalem and those minor dust-ups with the Pharisees had turned into a path of the cross. Miracles started disappearing and the apocalyptic sayings increased. There was that happy, where was that happiness button? Who moved my cheese? And it all ended on the cross. Those days of happiness are down with just a memory. Some who had followed had already left, going to Emmaus, some were going to lie low for a couple of days, gather together for a bit of safety and the last remembrances before going back to their nets, going back for looking for happiness in some other way. And this ghost appears to them, just a manifestation of better days. But that ghost 
did some very unghost-like things. He holds out his hands and feet. Here, come, touch and see. Do ghosts have flesh and bone? And yet they still do not believe because of joy. Standing right in front of them was proof of something more than happiness. Standing right there was joy. Death does not have the final word. Promise does not always end in dissipation. Happiness does not always end in grief. Here was Jesus standing before them and asking, like the biggest mooch about entering the room, got anything to eat around here? And over that roasted piece of fish, Jesus took the time to let joy sink in. He gave them a way to think about it. Remember what I told you before? No or not exactly. Well, here's a summary. It's not about you. Everything written about me, everything written about me is in the law of the Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. All of the Old Testament, all of the sacred scriptures have been fulfilled. And here is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead. Repentance and forgiveness shall be preached in his name. It will be preached to all nations. It is about God and Jesus. And what about he has done for you? The focus on self and the mad scramble of happiness can stop. The real focus is on Jesus and the peace and joy that he brings. It's not about us. The great lie that happens and tries to tell us that what it's all about is what we do, see, and have. The world tries to tell us that there is only one path. If you are not constantly happy, then you are on the wrong path. And we do all kinds of things to discern the right path. The superstitious might consult a horoscope. The religious might put out a sheepskin like Gideon. The atheist might retreat to philosophy. C.S. Lewis commented, I had always wanted, above all things, not to be interfered with. I had wanted to call my soul my own. I had been far more anxious to avoid suffering than to achieve delight. It had always been aimed at limited liabilities. Happiness puts an emphasis on us upon the temporal. Joy puts an emphasis on God upon the eternal. When God has taken away the taken care of the eternal, the temporal can live in a whole new way. When you are living in that joy, then you have real freedom. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Philippians, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. That is joy speaking. That is not a Zen or stoic disregard. Paul still says, I can do everything. Jesus still says to his disciples, struck with joy, you are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you went to what my father had promised. Neither is St. Paul chasing happiness. The happiness preachers would surely fault St. Paul for being content in need or in hunger or want. What St. Paul is expressing is Christian joy. For whatever I face now, I have rest in Jesus Christ, who has redeemed me for all time. I find my completion in the one the law and the prophets and the Psalms talked about. In that completion, we find our freedom. We find that the particular path is not all that important. We find that God wants us in joy and peace, joy and plenty, and joy in one. Joy what knows that God has come to us and found us and took care of what we really need, forgiveness and reconnection to the Father, reconnection to the eternal. Our lives as parents, our lives as grandparents, 
our lives as employees, our lives as employers, our lives as brothers and sisters and firemen and programmers, and all the path that God has given to us is the freedom to follow because we are the witnesses of all these things. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all our worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead and whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the whole Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, as we move through this Easter season of repentance and renewed devotion, we pray that you would remember us according to your steadfast love and goodness in Christ and instruct and lead us by your Holy Spirit in your ways that we may repent and believe the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you place the wood of the cross on the back of your only begotten son that as the promised offspring of Abraham, he might possess the gates of hell. Bless, we pray, his church, and all those called to preach and teach within her, that with the certainty that the gates cannot prevail against them, that in faith they may boldly trample every power of the enemy underfoot. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, preserve all catechumens and their teachers, all children and their parents, in every Christian home from the assaults of the evil one. As your son overcame Satan in the desert by the word of God, so also give us the victory through Christ and his word. Lord, in your mercy, Father of lights, from whom every good and perfect gift comes down from us from above, keep us from being enticed by our own desires to misuse your gifts and sin, and help us to use them rightly in service to you and to our neighbor. Bless all our leaders that we may be governed wisely and justly for the good of this present generation and for those to come. Lord, in your mercy, most high God, a refuge in every trouble, you have promised to hear us when we call to you. We pray that you would command your angels to guard our brothers and sisters, especially those that we name in our hearts, and all those who suffer in our midst. Keep them from every evil that can befall body, mind, and soul. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Lord God, the time is fulfilled and your kingdom is at hand as your beloved son comes to us here at the altar. By your spirit, grant that we may receive him in repentance and believe the gospel proclaimed to us in his body given and his blood shed. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we remember with thanksgiving those who uh, uh, bought before us, brought forth by the word of truth, and who now live and reign in your presence with your Son, as you have also brought forth us by the word of baptism, we pray that you would bring us to full maturity by your word, that we too may be gathered with them to your Son on the glorious harvest of the last day. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his perfect peace. Adoring praises now we bring, and with the heavenly blessed sing, Christ has triumphed, hallelujah. Be to the Father and our Lord, to spirit blessed most holy God, all the glory never ending, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace and serve the Lord. I'd like to thank the following people for helping me make this taping possible. Our ASL interpreter, Maria Coronado, our director of music at St. John, Rory Selden, and our director of music at Peace, Katja Richardson. These are the giants on whose shoulders I stand. And yes, we do have in-person services. At Peace Lutheran Church, located in Pico Rivera, California, our worship times are at 9 a.m. and 11. Our 11 o'clock service is held in Spanish. If you're a late riser, we have a worship time at 12.30 p.m. at St. John's in North Long Beach, at which we have ASL sign. I hope to see you at one of those services very soon. May God's perfect peace be with you this week and always. And please help us to get the word out. Hit like, subscribe, and share this video with family and friends. May God be with you. Thank you.